My name is Sharon Coward, and today we are speaking with the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities and Local MP for Ottawa Centre. As former Minister for Environment and Climate Change and the current Minister responsible for Infrastructure and Communities, your work is inextricably tied up with climate action and Canada's planning for a sustainable future. So today we have five questions for you. The first question is, what climate problem keeps you up at night? Uh, well, thanks very much, Sharon. So you might see I have my uh, construction hat on. I, and uh, it was great last time I was Minister of Environment and Climate Change, but now I'm in the business of building things. And so one of the things we need to do, we're in a, a pandemic, we have an economic crisis as well, and we need to build back better. And one of the areas that keeps me up at night is how do we clean up our transportation sector? How do we get people around in cleaner ways, which happen to often be faster ways and more affordable ways? So what do I mean about that? I really think that it is critical that we make a significant investment in public transit, in active transportation. So thinking about how do we get people to public transit or how do we get people around on walking or biking in active ways um, that don't have emissions. And that also, how do we have um, electric buses? Because we actually, people may not know this, um, uh, that we are one of the largest manufacturers in the world of electric buses. We have many amazing Canadian companies. So this is one of the things that I spent a lot of time thinking about because this is certainly what is part of my job. And I see this as my responsibility as we build back better and create jobs and grow our economy. We need to do it in a cleaner way and also more inclusive. Okay, that's a great answer. So the next question is, what's the solution? How do we get there? Well, so the good news is we know that uh, transportation, a large percent of, percentage of our emissions, um, around 20%, uh, and there are solutions out there. So I talked about this, like we know that solutions include, uh, it can include light rail transit. Um, so in Ottawa, we uh, have already working on the second phase of LRT, active transportation, the Flora Footbridge, one of the most popular uh, investments that I was involved with from the federal government, a footbridge that actually also links communities. So it's also an amazing thing beyond just the fact that people can get around and commute to work and go to school and go to businesses um, on their bikes or rollerblades or cartwheels, I don't really care. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, electric buses. But it actually is more complicated than that because you need to coordinate. And I think what we need to do a lot better is look at transportation as a whole. So let's take the national capital region. So yes, I'm member of parliament for Ottawa Centre, but people live, work and play on both sides of the Ottawa River. And so we just need to figure out how do we get people around in more sustainable ways, but where it's an irresistible option. Because my view is that you have to make it irresistible so people will want to get out of their cars. And so people will feel out they're part of the solution. So um, that's, that's key. And if you think about the opportunity, we're building light rail transit, 80% of Ottawans will live within five kilometers of light rail transit, but we got to figure out how do we get them those five kilometers. So active transportation is an example of that. Electric buses could be an example of that. So these are the things I spend uh, a lot of time thinking about. And there are, the good news is there are solutions to problem uh, of the pollution um, caused by by cars uh, and trucks. And uh, that is not just good um, for climate change, it's also good for cleaner air. Absolutely, so you've spoken to some of the solutions there. On the other side, what's in the way? What's stopping us from getting to this better future? Well, I mean, there's always, you know, I, I, I always see these as opportunities, but um, to identify some challenges, uh, one, you need to make significant investments. You need to prioritize it. Um, and often we don't think about costs in the right way. So you could talk about the social costs of carbon, which sounds very kind of boring, but it's important. Right now, uh, the, the, we're, you're able to pollute without a lot of consequences, even though the impact is huge. We know like we're literally destroying our planet by pollution. 
And so one of the things that we brought in was a price on pollution. And that means that you think twice about, I could save money if I make different choices. So if I decided to take um, a bus or buy an electric car um, or you know ride my bike, I'm gonna save money. And so that's one of the things. Second thing is that we need to make these investments. So that means governments need to step up, um, you know, opportunities with the private sector too, to make significant investments. Uh, the second phase of LRT, very expensive project, um, but having, you know, a huge, uh, I mean, in the end, it'll have a huge impact on the community. That's my dog. My dog wants some activity. <laughs> um, my cat's in the background trying to get involved too. Your cat's <laughs> probably running away from my dog. Um, and, uh, and I think the other thing we need is something just really practical it is when we plan, we really need to think about where are people living? Where's the city going to be going? We know the city is building east west. Okay, we need to think about transportation that way, that would, in, in those directions. We need to link modes of transportation. So how do you get people those five kilometers? How do you make sure that you have cycling paths? How do you make sure that the bus routes are connected? So it's not gonna take folks a lot longer. So you need some very good planning. Um, and of course you need public support. And uh, I think Enviro Center does a really good job because you also have to talk to people like real people. Um, you know, that sometimes environmentalists and I, I put myself in this category, you start talking in a way where people have no idea what you're talking about. And you want people, I, I think most people believe in cleaner air. I think most people believe in being able to get home faster so they can be hanging out with their kids. I think most people believe that, you know, it's better if you can save money. If you're, you know, able to take good public transit, you don't have to own a car possibly. And young people, many of them have no interest in owning a car. Um, and so I think that those are all benefits that we need to be talking to people about so that you have people who say, yes, this is a good investment of taxpayer dollars that we want you to go forward with these projects. Because at the end of the day, I mean, politicians are elected by people and we have to reflect the will of the people. The good news is the folks I talk to in particular, and I can say this for sure in Ottawa Center, they care greatly about action on climate change, about protecting the environment and making investments like in public transit. Absolutely, so that's actually a really good segue into the next question, which is what, what can the average person do? So of course, there's many things that people can do to support this direction, but if you had to pull out a couple, what would you say to our listeners? Uh, look, you should say we deserve good public transit no matter where we live in you know, the city. Uh, and you, you know, we support politicians that build and are committed to making those investments that have multiple dividends. And, and so folks, because sometimes people are saying, well, that just sounds like lots of money. I am a mother. So mothers like stretching their dollars. So every dollar invested for me in infrastructure, including in public transit, has to do three things. It has to create jobs um, and build our economy which certainly take LRT, creating really good jobs here in Ottawa, but also supply chain and businesses. Two, it's got to tackle climate change. Well, obviously we know that because it's going to reduce emissions uh, significantly. And three, it's got to build a more inclusive community. And inclusivity is a whole range of things, but it also includes people who can't afford a car. They deserve to have access to good public transportation. And we've seen this in the pandemic, essential workers do not have other options and public transit is really important. The second thing people can do is you can use it. <laughs> that don't, you know, just be like, you know, I support it, but I, you know, I've got my bike and I'm not gonna go, you know, get on my bike to use this new footbridge or, you know, with LRT or public transit, I'm not gonna use it. I understand we're in a pandemic. Um, so we need to, you know, everyone needs to make sure they're keeping each other safe and, but we're gonna get out of this. So I think, that's really important. Make choices that reflect your commitment to public transit. Um, and I think those are just, those are really practical things. And I think there's really an opportunity for us to work together. And I've seen that, you know, I have seen that there's been a real shift that young people leading the way often literally on the streets of Ottawa, you know, with their parents and their grandparents recognizing that every day the choices we make, they either, reduce emissions or they increase emissions. And I think we should think about the world like that, that we have agency. Of course, government has a role to play, but the individual choices we make, including how we vote, 
Um, you know, there's been differences. There's been a change in the U.S., right? That's going to have a humongous impact in terms of action on climate change. Um, I think that those are, are really important and you got to own it. Own your democracy, so vote, but also own your agency. Vote with your bike or vote with your transit pass. Amazing. That's definitely something that we encourage. Okay, so we have one last question for you, but it's a big one. What is the good future? Uh, well, I mean, in, in kind of very, you know, maybe this sounds very environmental terms, it's net zero by 2050. Yeah. that we have to meet our goals. We have to meet our 2030 climate uh, targets and stay tuned. We've got a new plan coming out. Uh, but we also, all the whole world needs to be net zero by 2050. We can't continue going in the way we're going. And so a good future though, in practical terms, it means clean air. It means clean water. It means that we've been able to prevent the worst impacts of climate change. It means that we're able to go out into nature and enjoy it. It means that, you know, that we're able to keep alive all these amazing animals and plants and, and species out there. It means oceans that aren't warming, um, that, you know, you're, that, the, that, that we have, um, you know, amazing life in our oceans and our coral reefs are healthy. Um, and in the end, it really means that, you know, when you think about seven generations out, that there is the opportunity to a better future than we have right now. And this is what I think is totally possible. I see it in big ways and little ways every day. Um, and that's why I really love my job, but uh, that's also why I'm optimistic. Wonderful. Well, that's, that's great. That, that winds up our questions for you for the day. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on The Green Room. We really appreciate it. No problem. I'm going to get back to world to back to work building a cleaner, more inclusive uh, Canada with good jobs. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.